Hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual TrekCon 5 with Sorak Lofton. Hello. Uh, my name is Ryan T. Husk. That is Melissa Longo. Hi. <laughs> we have two very special guests right now. It's Chase Masterson and Max Gradenchik. Hello. Yay. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate you. Hey. Thank you for having yeah. us. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. And congrats on Virtual TrekCon 5. This is fantastic. Thank you, Chase. Yeah, I remember oh, when we were just a baby. Yeah. We, we <laughs> thank you, you and everybody who yeah, everybody who <laughs> helped contribute to, to making it a success. Uh, Chase, you've been extremely supportive uh, of the podcast over the years. So mm -hmm. yeah, thank you so much. And every and every guest that we've had, it just it's been about you guys and, and the fans. So we love you. Mm -hmm. I know everybody appreciates you so much. And it's like this couldn't have been done without your hard work throughout the year, which leads to virtual track con, right? I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. It's wonderful. Thank you so yeah, much. Well, that's where Ryan gets the hat tip, hat tip to Ryan. Yeah. For the, Thank you. A lot of work part. <laughs> well, we all work together on this and we have so much fun doing it. Everybody at home, you know, Rom and Lita. This is of yeah. course, Chase and Max who portrayed Rom and Lita for almost three decades now rom uh 31 years uh lita joined a little bit later but now we've got a full story of decades long information that was uh rejoined we rejoined their story in lower decks season four episode six so this was melissa's fun idea to bring this all together and to kind of really explore it because when that episode came out uh, we had a writer's strike and an actor's strike going on, so we couldn't talk mm. about it. Now those strikes yeah. are over. We can talk about it. So, Melissa, this was your brainchild. You want to mm -hmm. get us started on this? Yes. Well, because I was so excited when I first saw this episode. I was like, finally, Ron and Lita are back <laughs> on screen, and we get to, to revisit two very beloved characters um some of the most beloved characters in my book <laughs> um so <laughs> um it, it, i i don't know how long it's been for you since first getting the call to say hey we want rama lita back so how did that come about mm, i have uh, 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 sorry, uh, nothing to do with this, but it says this meeting is being recorded. Can can I hit the got it button and it'll yes, the blue Ryan one. Hus yeah. No, whose whose face is Sirach's face is not visible. The blue one. What? Oh, yeah. No, hold on, hold on. The click click got it and it there, you it. there you are. There you are. There, there you go. are. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> I, <laughs> That's the ship's I, engineer right there. <laughs> since my brain is mushy, I have, uh, with the help of others, I've written down uh, how uh, the the question that I've already. Well, well listen to this. If the question is, how did they contact you? How did this happen? Mm -hmm. And I say the very first time I ever heard about this was in an email from Chase Masterson. And since coincidentally, I have it right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. What I did I this. say? <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna read it to you. So this is an email from Chase Masterson, date September 9, 2022. Ooh. One day after Star Trek Day. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Wow. I'll, I'll tell you later. Yes. Subject line. <laughs> Great news. Here's the, here's the, the body of the, the email. Max and Karina, hi. Have you heard the great news? Call me. She couldn't just tell the, the, the first, the great news. <laughs> The very same day, I received another email, this time from Angelique Fawcett, whom I knew from shooting Unbelievable. Do you know where I'm, you know what I'm talking about? 
And she told me that Lambert McGee Casting from Lower Decks was trying to get in contact with me and if it was okay if, I, if she had my number. So that's how I got in touch with everybody. And I'm pretty sure Chase and I talked on the phone a lot around that time. But you didn't say anything. You did. You did. No, you did. Um, I remembered Chase's taping when she taped that her uh, the episode. Uh, I remember it very well because we went over the script from a hotel room in Hamburg where Karina and I, my wife Karina and I, went to see a James Taylor concert, his Ooh. last stop on the American tour that he did, uh, a European tour that he did. That was in November of 2022. We also talked after the taping and she told me what a blast it had been. So my own recording didn't happen until much later, February 2023, because they were trying to find a studio in my area in, in uh, Austria. And uh, they, they, they didn't seem to find something they liked. So I mentioned to them that I would be in Los Angeles anyway to go to the Star Trek cruise. And, and, and they had a place and we, we did the taping. It was a Tuesday in a studio off of Cahuenga. Brad <laughs> Winters, the producer, masterfully arranged and organized everything. It's such a blur in my head. But I remember it being a lot of fun, being given a lot of freedom to try different things, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. that's Yay. what I, that's what <laughs> that is, this, I had, this will hold up in court. You <laughs> <laughs> brought the evidence, exhibit yeah. A. <laughs> what was the, what was the, what, what what's the, did I answer the question? How yeah, I think so. yeah. you did. But okay. Chase has some follow up though. She's yeah, been yeah. Absolutely. September she nine. <laughs> But I, I, I have to add I have to add something. The uh well I should let you speak, but I'm gonna add something. Um I, I ju jumped out of my head. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, well I'll just tell you it as I know it, okay? So it was Star Trek Day twenty twenty one and we were at the uh, uh, Skirball. And I was just, you know, jumping around saying hi to people. And I went up and just hadn't met this bunch of people. And I said, hi, I'm Chase. What's your name? And Mike McMahon was there. And he mm. said, hi, Chase. Um, we met about 10, maybe 12 years ago. And he said that I was, I do remember this now that he said it, but this is, this is exactly how it happened with my understanding of it. So he said, we met about 10 years ago and you were at, uh, on your way to a Bill Crady party um, at San Diego Comic-Con. And he, he said, we were walking along and we said, we'd love to go to that party. And I said, well, come in with me. And so he said, um, he, he was just an assistant at the time and he got to go into the Bill Crady party. And um, so he said, one of these days, I'm going to do her a favor. <laughs> and and nice. he said, I'm going to cast her in something. And at that point, he was doing, uh, you know, a lot of other shows. But um, I'm really glad that it, it lined up for this. So that's when he told me on Star Trek Day 2021 that I'm going to we're going to we're going to put you in. And I'm not saying that this is why I'm just saying that it worked out nicely and conveniently and serendipitously that's what he told me and so it was a year later at star trek day where i was like hasn't happened yet I say hello? <laughs> <laughs> is he just saying that and so anyway i i not that he wouldn't have you know what i'm saying but okay. then he said um we're writing you guys in we we we're writing max in as as the is, you know, obviously is the Grand Nagus and it's a really funny thing and he's got a baseball and I was like, what? And he told me a little <laughs> bit about it. But, um, it happened not long after that. Is that weird? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, that's, it's great. that's perfectly logical. And it actually explains, you know, a lot about you, Chase, because you have such good character and you're such a nice person that your mm -hmm. sweetness and generosity paid forward in good karma years Thank later you. Right. i i didn't That's... mean it like that i i mean really the the whole moral of the story is let the assistants into the parties be nice to the assistants well be yeah be nice to people and That's, be, nice nice to people. be nice to everybody yeah you know, be um, nice and, and 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 mike is such a lovely true blue like amazing yeah. trek person he was already a huge huge fan of max and and everybody he knows his trek 
you know, obviously from yeah. watching the show, everyone can tell that. So anyway, that's what I, that's how it played out for me. Mm -hmm. One correction. Uh, you said that he mentioned something about doing you a favor, but really he did all of Star Trek fandom a favor mm -hmm. by including Rom and Lita so that we can get, I wouldn't call it closure, but it, it, it's a revisiting of, by the way, a couple that is currently a finalist in the Star Trek all-time best power couple for the 2024 Lappy Awards, by the way. They are, the two of you are finalists for- For uh, real? Yep, the best yeah. power couple ever in Star Trek history. Wow. Uh, but that it's so awesome. cool that you were revisited <laughs> for this so that we could see, because that's that's all Deep Space Nine fans want. We want to know, so what happened? You know, what right. what happened to the Cisco? Where's Jake? What happened to Lita and Rom? What what's Quark up to? What is how many things does he own by now? You know, and so we got that. Do you remember uh Chase or Max when you saw that script? And you know, did you think this is great? This this works, this fits, it's funny, I'm happy with it. By the way, everybody, we're talking about this lower decks episode, if you didn't uh see it you should but here you are both in all of your glory <laughs> grand negus rom and first clerk lita you guys are amazing so fun. fantastic yes. worked well so well together but do you remember anything yeah. about the script about it jumping out and thinking like hey this is a great fit this really works I remember not getting all the way through I am reading the script and I thought oh my god they're making they're making uh, Ram and Lita look uh, look awful. I I I didn't think they were showing the. Uh, up, and the is couple. that just me? What's that? I didn't hear. Oh yeah, no. Uh, I think Chase froze up for a second. We still hear you and see I you though, hear. Chase. Yeah, it was a weird. For, the first part of it was very weird to me, and like they were against Ram and Lita, but then. But then at the end, everything works out and uh, we see that. So uh, I think that the was the turnaround was, yeah, the turnaround. Good, good, good word. Yeah, there, there was a turnaround and I, I really enjoyed that. I want to say mm -hmm. I was kind of freaked out when I read it. At first. Oh. So I was like, wait a second. How are you portraying Rob? Because he's <laughs> brilliant and wonderful. And this is like he's you know, not. And the turnaround was really important. Absolutely. And Max, yeah. Max you played it, you, you played it so beautifully. And mm. it is just kind of like the heart of the story, kind of in a nutshell, right? Because it's like, Quark had always thought, you know, that Rom was the ugly red brother, but we were not, not, not in a bad way. But, but he turns out to be the major new part of the Federation. I mean, that's mm -hmm. pretty damn cool. Mm -hmm. Huge. Yeah, th that's what I wanted to talk about because, you know, this uh, episode really establishes a lot of canon, the biggest of which is this, for, you know, the Ferengi joining the Federation in this episode. I think that's like a big thing that's happening. Uh, but what else is happening for me is that, Chase, your character Lita is continuing the idea of progressive women in Ferenginar that was established by Mugi. And we saw that Mugi mm -hmm. really fought for women's rights and for, um, you know, equality. And you're continuing that tradition as far as in the, in the, the line of power uh, being the Grand Negus's significant other. And I wanted to ask you how much that meant to you. We saw that you started the um, the strike, you know, for workers' rights. And so Lita has been instrumental in representing on behalf of the advancement of the Ferengi idea. Um, can you talk a little bit about how they continued that tradition and how important that is to you? Thank you. That's so nice, Sirach. It is so important. And, and I think it's partly important because Star Trek has a legacy of showing different kinds of strength. And Lita's strength was always one of integrity and one that stood up against 
oppression and stood up against challenges and and really came through. But it wasn't the same kind of strength that Kira or Dax had that a lot of other female characters at least got to show. I think that Lita had those kinds of strengths, but that wasn't so much written in. So for a lot of people, I think when they think of Lita, the first word they think of would not be strong. And I like that this is so strong. I love that that Lita was able and willing to take this whole thing and make sure we got the respect that we need and the, mm-hmm. you know, just all the deal points on the table and that we, Ron and Lita were in, you know, obviously still in love and in cahoots and able to come up with this scheme, this plan that was actually way smarter than a lot of other characters might have done. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and it worked. And it's really just nice to see different types of strength honored because not all mm-hmm. women have the type of strength that a lot of these strong women characters have. A lot of women have a, a just a different kind of strength. And uh, I think Lita is one of them. And I was happy that they portrayed that, that they showed that. Sorry, I'm going on. Yeah. That's that's huge. I think I yeah. think all of Star Trek fandom wanted to jump on that too because uh, there are so many different kinds of strength, and uh, I think we're finally getting past the notion that uh, a strong female character or a strong character in general has to be somebody with a gun or with giant muscles or with a furrowed brow. Uh, a lot of times, in fact, it seems almost you know more cases than not. The stronger characters are the ones that aren't necessarily in a position of power. That that's you know, if you're in a position of power, then how much strength do you really need? A lot of times, you know. But the ones that are not, or the ones that are working a really difficult job, or the ones that are you know working their way up, or dealing with you know major difficulties and climbing up the ranks, that shows a lot of inner strength. And I think it's really great that we could see these very very strong characters without a phaser in their hand or not piloting a shuttle or not, you know, punching a hole in a wall. And then I think Lita is definitely that. Uh, So I'm very glad you brought that up. Um, Sorry, Melissa, I think you were saying something. Yeah, well, I I think they highlighted that real that point really well in that it was Captain Freeman who was the shrewd one who was able to match what Lita and Rom had come up with that Mm -hmm. hurt the deal that it wasn't the admiral, you know, who who thought who underestimated Rom as as many people do, and continue to do as the Federation does. It underestimated Lita, you know, it, and and it was Carol Freeman, Captain Carol Freeman, who was the one who was like, oh, no, we're dealing with the Ferengis. We should, you know, um negotiate in the way that they do <laughs> so that I, I think yeah. they did that really well a great point lisa and also just to you know if i may say same with rom rom is the yeah. sexiest yeah most fun loveliest <laughs> most powerful and i'm not just saying this is lita i mean it's just the, what Matt's what you brought to rom was so like the hottest guy Sweet. on the show. It really was. Sweet, yeah. endearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, just, yeah. Yeah. He brought layers to uh, Ferengi that we've never seen before. Um, just the softness that you bring, the compassion, the empathy. These are things that we don't really see in Ferengi. Mm-hmm. And I'm, Max, you've done a great job of bringing that to Rob's character. Um, mm-hmm. you, you know, you, you think outside of just the Ferengi, you think about uh, the totality of the connection between beings in this case, you know, and I think that's what's really great about you. Um, I want to ask you about uh, Max recording this, uh, the actual physical recording of this episode. Did you fly in from Austria and record in the soundstage here in the States? Did you patch in your uh, performance uh, on the phone or from a studio near you. Um, how did you actually physically do the recording for this? Um, yeah, good question. It was, uh, mm, uh, I 
they uh, asked me, uh, they told me, we'll record here for you. The, the Austrians uh, will record the, the, the Austrians. The, the Star Trek people said, we'll, we'll record wherever you want. I said, well, how could you do that? Is it this, we have relationships all over the world. We can record anything you want. Then uh, a few months passed, and uh, it it kind of I, I never got that clear. I, I don't think they could record wherever they wanted. They were looking because they were looking. They said we're still looking for a place to record, and they like this place in Los Angeles. And I think I flew. I told them that I was coming in for the cruise. One of the cruises uh, through. Uh, through Los through Los Angeles, and uh, I would be happy to do it then. And they liked that they liked that idea that I was already there. So uh, that, that's that's really what happened from my perspective. And, mm. and then we did oh, great. then we did the then we did the shooting, and that was uh, the taping, and that was um, wow. They were very 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 um, good guys, and uh, they allowed me to do so many things, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was a. I enjoy, I enjoy, I enjoy, I enjoyed it. I'm, I don't, I'm not good on uh, TV or film. Things are tough because I, I never have gotten used to the camera. You know, I've just never gotten used to it. I'll live to be 300, and I won't be used to the camera. And they'll say, move your head two inches this way, so we get the shadow <laughs> off of here. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I can't do it. But this. But this voiceover thing, man, man. There's no two inches. That you do whatever you want. You do whatever you want. And they say, well, a little too much salt and a little more pepper. Okay. Oh, it's uh, it was um, it was a good day. Can you tell us what that means about the little less salt and a little more pepper? No, they don't really say that. I Damn it. it! I thought that was such a great insider thing. I was like, does that mean does that mean a little less sass and a little more fresh? I don't know what's going on. Oh, I, I wanted to ask you, Rom or Max, what surprised you about Rom's evolution and revisiting him again? What uh, to, are you referring to the seven years on DS9 where he started out under his brother's thumb and ended up the Grand Nagas of the Ferengi? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then seeing him again in this nothing. new episode. Melissa, uh, 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 I was great, wasn't I? You were uh, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were great. I, uh, that, that move up for Rom was... Uh, you know the writers did that. I the writers, the, the writers are the our writers were the greatest, um, led by Iris Stephen Bear, and uh, people I, whose names I'm only forgetting because uh, I'm nervous. Uh, but uh, I, I, it's the it's the writing. You to me it's the writing. It's the way they wrote it. They they I think they, I think I did that. I came in. One of the first couple of episodes, and uh, they liked where I was going with it, and I just think they kept that line uh, going, and it got better and better for them, and so, so they kept it. And what was the what was the other well about was, about, about the, in the episode in the, in the what's the name of the episode we're dealing with? Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. The the Kurt episode? lower decks, yeah. lower decks. The, the lower decks. I'm not, am I am my heart place. My, my question help you with the lower decks as well. Or... Well, well, I was asking more. What surprised you about revisiting him in the lower decks episode? Was it? Did you feel like it was a um, a satisfying continuation, or do you want to see more? I want to see more, but do you want to see more? <laughs> I, to be honest, I think every actor wants to see more of themselves in in, in front yeah. of the camera and behind the in front of the camera. So uh, it was it was like a dream come true. I have another. I have, I have. I have. So I have another shot at exploring this character. It, it was. It was. It was incredible. What a what a nice thing. 
really nice thing. And uh, I tried to do a good job, but uh, it was, um, yes, it was, a, it, it was a big deal. To, uh, I know it's a big deal to the fans, or I think it's a big deal yeah. to the fans. It was a big deal to me. And I have a little tear coming out of my eyes. Mm. <laughs> so, so thank you, you, thank know, you for the question. Um, watching this made me think, this is a complete hypothetical, but it just made me think about your your character, um, Rom and Lita. Uh, Chase, did you would you think that if that you know later on at some point that Rom and Lita would have children of their own? Is mm. is that something that you ever I, gave some consideration to? It would certainly be wonderful. Um, I heard that we did have a baby in one of the novels. Oh. And, and I mean, just at face value, what would that be like? Like cleavage with ears? I, I just don't know. <laughs> um, it's so the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but very smart. Very smart. <laughs> very smart, yes. Yes. Yeah, because that, that's one thing that kind of crossed my mind as I was watching this episode. I was thinking, would, would they have, you know, um, had a kid together and start to build a family or maybe. The responsibility of you know Negus was too much for you know responsibility for you guys to focus on that. I, I just something that came into my head watching the episode. It would have, it sure would have been fun. And obviously, like Max says, it, you know, it's uh, every actor wants to have more fun, more to do. But can yeah. I just jump in and say, you know, we we did have such amazing writers, and it's something that we can't possibly emphasize enough. I mean, people say, how was that arc for you? And and it's always that we didn't write this. And huge honor and respect to those guys. And they should be the ones that, you know, that you're asking for the autograph or or the, you know, chance to have lunch with or whatever. I mean, these guys are so brilliant and lovely in their hearts. But also, can I just say, I'm sorry if I'm going on. Max, a minute ago when you said it was a dream come true, that's the kind of sweetness that they see in you and that you created a ROM that we wanted to see succeed and that we didn't have any doubt deserved great things. And they had to see that in you in order to write what they wrote. You know, someone that we root for and love and hold in our hearts and it's it's just so completely you max that they were able to to do that for thank you Jim. absolutely thank absolutely you. It's so true yeah and we, and same with you chase i mean yeah same with you yeah. Chase. we love you the writers yeah. Were, yeah, they they wrote the foundation but you both provided the inspiration for these characters to grow so it's a it's a collaborative effort, I think, on both the actors and um, the writers. Because if you guys weren't so great at your jobs, um, they wouldn't have anything to write for. You know, that's very nice. Thank you. And I I just want to also say, Max, you have such a beautiful sensitivity in your face and in your your heart comes out your face and out your eyes. And one of the things I loved in the whole See everything that was DS9. One of the things I loved was most was the documentary, mm. the, the opening and the closing of that, where you were singing and and it was just it was it was everything. It was so so sensitive and so vulnerable and so present. And I just love watching you. Thank you, Chase. Um, Chase, I thought you really had one of the best lines in this episode. You said, here's the invoice for the bust of good fortune. It was, it just made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, think, uh, here's a gift, and here's the bill here's for the gift. Invoice. <laughs> yes. They, they kind of really, I mean, Lena came across as like really a ball buster, right? I mean, there was none of that. <laughs> yeah. Kind of shy, none of yeah. that. Actually. Yeah. Kind of shy, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> you know, leadiness. No, it was like her eyes are like. <laughs> she was tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I don't well, that's know. Because, I mean, you know, of- it, you guys are in a position of power. Um, you're dealing with the Federation, which is the big superpower of the galaxy, let's say, you know, of the yeah. of the universe, right? And so, yeah. uh, and, and both of your characters, Rom and Lita, are known for speaking truth to power. And this is something, a phrase that has come out, you know, since or after, you yeah. know, the, the show was originally aired. But speaking truth to power is something that we always hear about. And I feel that, you know, Lita speaks truth to power. And Rom also uh, was speaking truth to power, you know, against the, the the system that was already in place and challenging it. And both of you, both of you did that. Now, as in, in the position of power, still doing the same thing, which is speaking truth to power, telling the Federation, this is, this is how it's going to go. This is what we want. And this is what's fair. And we want to make sure that we're dealing with shrewd, smart people that are not going to be um, letting themselves being taken advantage of because you won't let yourselves be taken advantage of. I thought that was an interesting kind of um, play on the character and how they built it. So, so it made perfect sense to me that it played in that way. In the beginning, I can see Max, you said it felt like they were writing your character, you know, in a, in a, a negative way, but that was all a test, right? That was all you guys testing them to see, where their heart was and how they were going to negotiate with you. I thought that was a very clever uh, twist or, you know, that, that Mike McMahon and the writers put in. If they're smart enough for us. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. We want to know who we're dealing with here. Maybe they're just not smart enough. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so beyond that, and I think we've kind of uh, touched around this a couple times uh, in this amazing panel, but we, you know, again, we're we're revisiting Rom and Lita decades later, or really just a few years later in that uh, current timeline or era in Star Trek. But have you ever, either of you, kind of just fantasized about whatever came of your characters before you saw this um or and, and performed this were there some things that you thought like you know lita sorry chase we're going to be doing this all day but <laughs> uh, chase <laughs> no, like you me. mentioned you mentioned there was a book that mentioned they had a kid you know uh had you either of you ever thought what could have happened with your characters what might have happened and is this newest edition of the Ballad of Ram and Lita in Lower Decks, has it, you know, sparked any more thoughts of, oh, well, from here, I wish they would do this or any, you know, any thoughts like that of what you wish would have happened to your characters? Some, yeah. <laughs> um, Max, Max, what do you think? Well, I always had the thought, um, that Rom, uh, it wasn't like they were going to get back to Ferenginar and everything was going to be easy for them. You know what I mean? They, they were going to have to fight their way through politicians of different parties and and that kind of thing to and and sh- shady deal making and uh, whatever pol- whatever it is uh, people do to hold on to power. They would have to do that to uh, to keep going. Uh, otherwise, they'd probably up, end up in Ferengi prison. But uh, so I, I thought that I thought the next episode would be that Rom is in trouble. Uh, I think uh, Quark may, maybe comes to the rescue or helps to come to the rescue. Lita is invaluable, uh, and and and. And they they fight they fight there and there have to be a couple episodes at least of fighting maybe it's a whole season, mm-hmm. uh, especially if I'm still playing the character. <laughs> uh, so that's what I thought. That's what that's where my that's where my mind went. Yeah, it's gone. That makes sense. Yeah, um, so- Max, no, when ahead, you're please. when you're when you're doing this, because uh, right away it's like oh that's wrong, I can tell. Yeah. And and you're not using your voice. You get into the Rom voice. Uh, how easy is that transition for you to just get into Rom's voice? Because that, it, you know, it's it's different than Max than talking to Max when I hear Rom. 
I think I can do it very, I think I can do it very, fairly. I think I can do it fairly easily. <laughs> if, you, if you really want to hear it. <laughs> My brother. <laughs> but yeah, you I, get right into that character. It's just, it's amazing how seamlessly you could just turn the switch on and there it is. But I mm -hmm. think before we did the voiceover stuff, I was working on I I knew I was going, I knew I was going in to read to 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 actually I, I had the part and I was going in to to, to perform it. I knew that uh, I mean, so, uh, some people have a bad long-term memory and I have bad short-term memory. Well, you were you were going to say about how you were able to switch the voice on uh, yeah. when you were going into to reading. Because I yeah, well, I started talking like that. Um, Max, you always this voice, this voice. What I was going to say is this voice, the, the Ram voice, was not as good when I was rehearsing. I think the older I get, so I'm down here somewhere, and I felt I was up here more <laughs> than down here, <laughs> and I, it bothered me. It bothered me. I think I went home to Karina and said, "Listen to this. I this is as low as I, this is." This, Low as I can go, and she just she just waved it off like it was <laughs> with all my imagination. But but now I feel okay about. It. Right now I feel maybe I maybe I was wrong, but I could have sworn that my voice dropped like two notes. Two, yeah, but yeah, pretty. I've had a lot of experience with that voice. <laughs> so, um, we love it. We love all of it. And what were you saying, Chase? Oh, I was just reminding Max of when we were doing a lot of conventions after the show wrapped and we were doing the Ferengi family hour and you still had your teeth and you would put the teeth in and like immediately just become Rom, the voice, <laughs> the walk, yeah. the, the, just all of it. And Lolita and I just used to laugh. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was such a blast doing that show because... We could just, I don't know, revisit everything, but that was a huge part of it. Just the transformation right there before your eyes. <laughs> Chase, do you remember working uh, with Don Lewis in this episode with Captain Freeman? Or, or were you guys um, recording separately? We did record separately, but my gosh, I, I never met her, but I would love to. I mean, she's so great. I love her on this show. I love what they did with her. I love that she is her. All of it. Yeah. it it's a pretty brilliant show in every way, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, um, uh, I, I just, I don't know, all the, all the other characters, the mother-daughter relationship I love. Yeah. The fact that she's just this hopeless rebel and always screwing up and doing ridiculous <laughs> things, but she's still a hero. <laughs> and it's just wonderful. Mm. And, and, and the chemistry that you guys are able to pull off recording these segments separately. Yeah. Because um, I, I, when I'm watching it, it feels like you were all in the room together, the admiral, the captain. It feels like you're all in the room together, you know, bouncing off of each other like you would do in a, you know, on a, a reading or a rehearsal. But you guys are recording separately. And the way it's seamlessly put together even the sound quality doesn't sound like it's been recorded at mm. different times. It's mixed together so well. Um, I mean, the, the, that's that's also a remarkable talent in voice acting as well, just to pull off this, the, the effect of everything being so seamless and you guys are actually, you know, um, responding to somebody else's uh, delivery. That's, that's what I feel when I watch it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. That's really nice. Mm. And, and I think it's also the the ear of the director. I mean, Mike is he knew what he was going for and he knew how it would match with the other things. That was my experience that day. And he was, you know, really fi fine tuning it. Um, I don't know if the others had recorded before us or after. I, I have no idea, but yeah, um, he yeah. really got to credit no, the director. Yeah, that's a good wow. point. You have no idea what anybody else is doing. Yeah. Wow. Well, we rehearsed. We did rehearse because we wanted to make sure that we could follow what each other was saying. But 
pros. Obviously, we didn't have the benefit of the director there. We, you know, everything can change. So anyway. And we also we also recorded at two totally different, like two months apart, two and a half months apart, something like that. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I wow. Was, I yeah. was amazed. I was amazed by that. Wow. That's me. Wow. Yeah. yeah I they, guess they the timing. Uh, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, animation taking such a long time with everything, I guess they, I don't know how long it takes really, because, <laughs> you know, who knows what's being drawn and what's just done, but <laughs> there's clearly a lot of work that goes into the show. So now, now, no, this is another question I have is, did you see the animated characters of yourselves before recording or did the, did they show you like, okay, this is like a headshot or a still of what you would look like in animation form? Or did that, it was that all a surprise to you uh, at the end? I did get to see, did you get to see Max? I'm trying to remember. I know we watched, Karina and I watched the whole season of, of okay. uh, yeah. maybe every season, right? We got caught up to date. Wow, nice. But there were no Ferengi yet. So when did I first see right. it? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. This Quark part I don't was in remember. one. What's that? One of, Quark was in one of the episodes. Right. And, and, and the not. Yeah. 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 And who else? Um, you said Armin. Yeah. 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 We need yeah. Jake. Yeah. I know. I, I, <laughs> we need Jake. And I have, I have another question <laughs> for you guys before we go. I know we're running short on time. Ryan's ready to to uh, roll us out but i have another question <laughs> do, do you have headshots of your animated <gasps> self that you can bring to the conventions that's another thing that we have to get mike mcmahon on if if yeah. it doesn't exist that's a great all right question <laughs> i i've got them across the table even before the i mean i'm I, all of the stuff i'm saying we're just so like beyond uh, like amazed and grateful and tickled and honored and in love with the fans that they do this but i got them before the the, the episode came out even wow. it was so sweet they oh, wow. printed them from some wow. screenshot or something and they they yeah they have them already wow. get ready max no i have not it's it's a still shot of of the moving picture the moving animated mm -hmm. picture. wow Oh, yeah. Wow. And, 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 <laughs> and it's like an eight by ten and we're, and people are gonna sign that kind of thing. They Water have now. them for you. They wow. they have them for you. We gotta get Max his uh, headshot is animated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the ball. With the ball. <laughs> With the ball. <laughs> And well, when I uh, saw that ball, I was thinking, did Max take the ball at the end of Deep Space Nine? Was it Rom that took it? That ball oh, is missing Cisco's ball. I was yeah. thinking, did Rom get it? Uh, so that's a little, you know, myth right there. We'll start that rumor. Right. Well, you <laughs> you know. All those Easter eggs. Yeah. That baseball yeah. on Cisco's desk. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it was an adorable love letter to the show, to Rom Lita, to baseball. It was just, and he put so many things, they put so many things into that mm -hmm. brief exchange and and had us coming out on top yeah and yeah. even michael anyway, pillar was, yeah huh? <laughs> even michael pillar who introduced baseball to star trek yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah they fit so much in in such a clever way <laughs> it's just they're brilliant people mm -hmm. i just want to say one thing if anybody out there was feeling like oh lita's a bitch now I know. <laughs> I feel ya because the way she's drawn and the eyes are very. I, I already did that, but I just want to say I totally get it and I totally feel you. And I think that's very much the style of Lower Decks in, in a lot of ways and the style of a lot of animation these days. So, but um, I'm sure later Lita was really mm. nice. She well, had to be I a shark. In your that defense? was that's that's what yeah. she was there for. She had to yeah. be the shark. Yeah, that's right. it, that, was that, and, yeah. it was a and role. It was a And in your defense, um, Chase, I, I feel like Lita was protecting Rom. Mm -hmm. that, that's how I I felt like it was more like this is you know I'm going to protect Rom, 
um, I'm the first line of defense or the last line of defense uh, to, before you. you get to the Grand Nagus. So I'm going to be the one that's, you know, really protective. And I felt it was justified. I didn't feel like it was just you being okay. an out of place, <laughs> mean spirited person. Okay. I felt like no, not mean spirited, you- just savvy. No. No, yeah, exactly. but, but it was it was sort of reminiscent of bar association when when everyone went on strike at Quarks. It it just meant that you meant business. It didn't mean that you were being a bitch. Well, yeah. that's a very good point. Thank you, Melissa. That's a good point because a lot of times when women are savvy in business, they're seen as a bitch, yeah. and yeah. It, yeah. that can't we can't have that. It has to be like we get to use our voices. I just think there was a, a an edge to lead it that a lot of people weren't expecting, which is fine. Everybody mm. has all aspects. Anyway, I didn't mean to go off on it, but well, it's those eyes. Out. We we next time we draw her, <laughs> have a little bit brighter, pretty eyes. <laughs> just really just eyes. like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just those eyes. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. Like, not yeah. Open them. <laughs> They're not used. <laughs> oh, she's ready. She's ready to go on for the kill there. But those look yeah. like, no, to me, they look like sexy eyes. <laughs> like, she's got, mm-hmm. hello. That's kind, Melissa. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, we do only have a, a couple minutes left here. But uh, on the subject of headshots, both of you have some upcoming events. I believe you're both going to be on the cruise very soon after this virtual TrekCon 5. Uh, I believe Max is also going to be in Star Trek San Francisco, Trek to San Francisco in March. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have anything to tease about uh, what's going to be coming up? Do you have any special shows or you're going to be, Max, you're going to be signing ROM, cartoon ROM autographs? <laughs> No, but you're right. You're <laughs> yes, it's correct. Creation Entertainment. Can I say Creation Entertainment? Yeah. They have mm-hmm. they have a they're having a um, a convention in in uh, up uh, in San Francisco by the airport. Uh, and what was the other thing? The cruise thing. The cruise thing. Yeah, six days, seven mm-hmm. days, whatever it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Going to uh, starting out of Miami. So, uh, Chase, I know you're going to have your headshots, your new headshots, right? I will have those Lita shots. And um, yeah, yes. And as I mentioned, I was not invited to Star Trek San Francisco. <laughs> yet. Uh, yes. Not yet. No. Not yet. No, Good point. Not yet. No, I, 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 I couldn't go now. I had plans. Mm. Um, but. But I will be in San Francisco. This is the reason I mentioned it is I will be in San Francisco on May 4th. If anybody out there is a San Francisco person or um, might want to come, it's a really wonderful benefit that um, I'm helping a friend do. Um, it's for children with cleft palates and um, all over the world. It's a, it's, a, it's a very major issue. And so she is a CEO for a place called Alliance for Smiles. So I'll be there on May the 4th if anybody wants to come out. We'll hang out, we'll party, we'll smile, we'll raise money for people, and that'll be fun. May 4th. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. May 4th. Let me uh, pull that up where the uh, events are. Do you know exactly where it's going to take place? I do. Thank you. It's at the Hotel Nico in San Francisco. Got it. Anyway, thank you for you know, we're all on social. Well, we'll, we're all talking about our stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So that's May 4th, uh, San Francisco. And what was the hotel again? Hotel Nico. Got it. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, oh, everybody, before we go, we, we'd be remiss if we didn't point out Melissa's shirt. Have you seen the Ferengi family shirt she's wearing? Check this out. The whole family's (laughs) there. There's Quark, Nog, Rom and Lita. Be cutest. And oh, Zach. Zach. Yeah. There you guys are all right in the middle. Family. But Rom and Lita are right in the middle. Very <laughs> sweet. And yay, also Nog. Want to do a, always Nog, yeah. yeah. And I want to do a plug for Max, too, as well, that uh, he may know about, but he's got the Rat Pack album, which is going to be oh, coming yeah. out, if I'm right. not mistaken. It will be available at some point, maybe in San Francisco. But yes, um, 
the Rat Pack album is something to look forward to for all the fans out there. The mm-hmm. art album art cover looks amazing. And uh, I'm looking forward to buying a copy of that too myself because I want to hear, hear it in the car. <laughs> uh, Sirach, I can give you a copy. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's, you see, that's, that's why we love you, Max. You're so genuine and so sweet. <laughs> But to the fans out there, but then he'll give you an invoice. That, that <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll be great. We got to bring you on next time, Max, and talk about recording that album. I want to hear a little bit about that too. One of these days, because mm-hmm. um, you do yeah. so such a with the Rat Pack. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. Um, yeah. Congratulations on on that, and for the fans out there, look uh, look forward to getting a copy of that as well oh thank you so much yeah for me personally at star trek las vegas the rat pack is the highlight of every year it's just the best thing so much fun it's amazing so thanks for doing that max everybody that album's coming out uh very soon it's basically done it will be available uh where the rat pack plays concerts and shows at conventions where the rat pack plays please also support uh, what Chase is doing May 4th. Some people call it Star Wars Day. We call it Do the Right Thing Day and definitely go support <laughs> that uh, and follow yeah. her on social media for all that information. I'm sure she'll keep us up to date on that. Uh, Thank you so Max much. Max and Chase, this has been so cool. We always love revisiting mm-hmm. with you. We're so happy your characters have come back up. We're so happy that you're so active chase oh my god you're so active in the community uh and you do so much amazing great beautiful important stuff before we go can you just plug a little bit about uh the coalition well that's so nice thank you i wasn't intending to um the coalition is uh really growing and i want to say i will never forget the support the star trek fans gave us Um, You may know it as Pop Culture Hero Coalition. Our program is called The Heroic Journey Mental Health, using characters from stories we love to teach crucial skills. And um, I am very honored to say that data shows that we are in 45 states now, working in 45 states and impacting over half a million lives. So... um, I'm just so grateful because we couldn't have done this without you guys. Um, You guys were our foundation back when we were self-funding this and had nothing. And um, I'm just grateful if anybody wants to be a part or get involved or maybe uh, get your corporation involved or whatever, uh, Mm -hmm. tweet me or, you know, find me on social. And um, I'm just grateful that we're in this work together because uh, sorry to go on about it, but, you know, this is Roddenberry work, right? Mm-hmm. making a world where we can all live long and prosper yeah. and there's a bunch of our friends yeah. thank you yeah. I, just want to say, I just want to say one more thing i'm grateful that we had a chance to come back and it was such a blast and i very much look forward to seeing you Sirak, on whatever show they'll put you on because you could be on any of them or all of them and i mean not just star trek obviously you know so much uh work out there that you deserve and but definitely star trek i mean you'd fit so well in so groundswell we need to yeah. talk about this yes right, of right? Oh, i mean so everybody sweet. out there raise your hand say it say it on social media yeah i think sarak would be a perfect choice for strange new worlds and any star trek that's ahead it mm-hmm. just makes sense right any of them absolutely it makes perfect yeah, sense. he's gonna be yeah. he's gonna be the first person to be in all of them it's gonna be amazing right. Yeah, right now. <laughs> from, well, from your mouth to god's ears as they yeah, say you know <laughs> really should i'm shocked it hasn't happened sooner but mm-hmm. i think it will and I, I i think you know we just need to start making some noise about it absolutely mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh that's very sweet of you um but i'm, I'm really happy cheerleading for all of my friends and family I love that I get to see you guys. I love that I get to see everybody who's getting a chance to reprise their characters, get back in the in the mix. And I'm actually honored that the new people that are in charge of Star Trek, the, the Alex Kurtzmans and the Mike McMahons and all of the showrunners for the various shows, that they have such a love for the work that we did, for the work that other mm-hmm. Star Trek franchises did before 
yeah. uh, the new stuff. And they've been paying yeah. uh, homage to that in a very respectful way. So I'm, I'm grateful uh. that that the the show and the franchise is in good hands with with people who really care about character mm. building and and universe building. Um, mm. So kudos to the Alex Kurtzman of the world that are really um, writing this ship and making it you know do the right thing. Mm-hmm. That's great. Quite beautiful, and that's one more reason why you should be on the show. <laughs> right, I know. Isn't, isn't that perfect? <laughs> Excellent. And Grand Nagus Rom definitely agrees. That chuckle says it all, I think. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, uh, Max and Chase. We really appreciate you. You've been amazing to us for uh, five years on the seventh rule. And this is also our fifth virtual Trek Con. And good luck in the 2024 Lappy Awards. You are finalists for Power Couple, as voted by the fans. These are the fans that made you guys finalists of all of the couples in all of Star Trek, including uh, on Next Generation, Spot and whoever got her pregnant. Uh, those of you that like Next Generation know that Spot got oh, wow. pregnant. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's just the cat. I uh, the cat. Wow. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's really cool. We're rooting for you. But that's the about power it couple us. of kindness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's about it for us. Uh, thank you all very much for hanging out with us for Sarah Cloft and myself, Melissa Longo and Aaron Eisenberg. Thank you very much for hanging out. We'll see you soon. Go support Max and Chase in their future endeavors and conventions. And we'll see you next time on Virtual Trek Con 5. Thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. Love so you guys. Much.